In this video, we're going to learn about the bevel tool in Blender. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, I want to cover the bevel tool in Blender. I want to talk about what it does related to Fusion 360's chamfer tool, and also some things we need to avoid. To get started, the first thing that we're going to do is hide our camera and our light. Next, we want to make sure that we can move this cube out of the way, and it's important to note that at this point in our series, I'm not going to continue to display the shortcut keys constantly on the screen. I think at this point you should be very familiar with moving, rotating, and scaling of components, and also vertices, edges, or faces. So we're going to move this object in the Y direction, noting that I used G and Y on the keyboard. Next, we're going to go to Add, Mesh, Cube, and place one right there at the origin. We're going to say G, Y, move this one over to the side, and we're going to do Add Object again. Note that you could also use Shift and A on the keyboard to bring up the Add menu. Now that we have three separate cubes, let's go ahead and apply some bevels to each of them and see what they do. First, we're going to hit Tab to go into Edit Mode, and we're going to change to an Edge Selection. With everything selected, we're going to use the bevel tool. We're going to begin dragging this yellow bar out, and we're going to go back to our selection tool. You can see that what we did was we added a bevel to all the selected edges. This is great because we created quads in some areas, but we do have tries in the corner. Now, why does this matter? Well, we're going to go back into object mode. We're going to go to our modifiers, and we're going to add a subdivision surface. We're going to go to a number two level, and we're going to apply this. And the reason we want to apply it is because if we go back into edit mode, now we can take a look at this and see what's been changed or done. What I want to do here is I want to hold down Alt on the keyboard, and I want to select edges. You'll notice that this edge goes all the way around, creating a loop. This one goes all the way around this direction, creating a loop. But in the corners, these edges end. This means that the flow of edges around our object is not consistent. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at the second object, go into edit mode, and this time we are only going to select the four vertical edges. I'm going to use control and B on the keyboard to bevel. You can also go to edge and bevel edges here, or once again, you can use the bevel tool here. When we do this, what we've essentially done is we've taken our nice quad object, the cube, and we've divided that top face up. So now we have more than four sides. This means if we go to apply a subdivision surface modifier, you can see that we now have this point at the very top because we don't have consistent edge flow. So in order to deal with this, we need to insert loops. Remember this is control and R on the keyboard, and I'm gonna use this to control the edge. But when we try to do this on the top, you'll notice that we don't have a consistent edge loop on the top, so we aren't able to add that consistent edge loop by using Control and R to do the cut and slide. So we need to use our knife tool. In this case, we could use K on the keyboard. But what I want to do is I want to select a vertex. I'm going to change to vertex selection mode. And I want to go across, right click off the side of the component, right click, I'm going to come through here, right click, and come through here, right click, and then hit enter to accept. What we've done is we've divided up the top, and you can see that we've got these tries in the corners, but we have quads everywhere else. I'm going to go back to my selection dialog, and I'm going to go back to edge selection, and once again use control and R to insert a loop. Notice that we still don't have that control loop around the top, but I'm going to insert one edge here, right click to place it right at the middle, do control and R again. And notice that this gives me a little bit better solution here. And if I do it one more time, I finally get to that full edge. Now I can hold down Alt, Shift and Alt, and then X on the keyboard to delete. In this case, we're going to select Dissolve Edges. You can also go to Mesh, and we can select Delete at the very bottom and Dissolve Edges. Now we want to select the edges, and I'm going to use G twice on the keyboard to slide along the edge. This will allow me to simply move it out in the direction along the consistent edges. Now I'm going to hit tab to go back into object mode, and I want to take a look at these edges. As we increase the subdivision, you can see that we have a very clean edge. 
So I'm gonna go back down, I'm gonna right click on the object and shade smooth. And note that this is a great solution. We have really good topology. And even though we had these tries in the corner, we're using quads around the edge that we wanna control. So if we hold down Alt here, you can see that we have these face loops going all the way across the top. But in this corner, if we select the edges and we hold down Alt, you can see it goes all the way around the outside. Same thing here and same thing here. So into and out of that corner, we have complete edge loops helping us control the flow, meaning that we don't have the tries or end gons directly up against that edge. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at the last cube. I'm gonna go into the edit mode and again, control and B, I'm gonna bevel everything. And in this case, once I've beveled everything, I'm gonna use Control and R, and I'm gonna insert some edge loops. But notice the, the orientation of these edge loops is a little bit different. So it's not going completely around the object. We had to have one vertically. And then we can't really add one in the middle here. We have that same problem where we don't have the ability to add that loop around, and we kind of have to work our way around in order to get that. So I'm gonna hold down Alt, select that edge, X, and dissolve edges. I'm gonna rotate this around. Alt, X, dissolve edges. Now, if I subdivide this, go ahead and increase this, and I'm gonna apply it and go back into edit mode. If we take a look at the topology, you can see that in the corners, it looks pretty good. If we hold down Alt, we've got these loops going all the way around but we still have this issue where we get into these corners and our topology or our edge flow just sort of stops. We hit tab and we go back to this object. You can see that we were able to keep or, con or contain the top face as flat and we've got much fewer control edges in order to get that shape. If we go back out into object mode and we apply the subdivision surface and then we take a look at the edge flow, you can see that this is a much better edge flow. If we hold down Alt, you can see that we can select these loops going all the way around. We've got control loops that go around the object, and we have better control overall of the geometry. So it's important to note that the bevel tool is similar to adding a chamfer in a parametric CAD program, but there are differences and nuances because we have to be extremely mindful of the edge flow around our designs. Ideally, we wanna maintain consistent quad faces all the way around, or at the very least, we want those quads to travel around the design where we want to consistently control things like edges. If we take a look at smooth shading on the other objects, obviously we have three very different objects using the same workflow. Each of these was done by inserting edges, by adding bevels, and we've got three different results. So you have to think about what it is that you want out of your designs and whether or not you want to control a clean, consistent edge up here on the top, or if you want to apply bevels to the entire thing and subdivide them and then sort of work on the topology from there. At this point, I think it's important that you play around with the tool, figure out if it works for you, figure out if it doesn't work for you, but the basic understanding of the topology and the flow of edges is going to be a consistent theme across your designs. If you have any questions, please let me know. And as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.